Welcome, welcome. This is Real Deal Sports Talk with me, your host, KP. We're going to come at you each and every Sunday morning with the realness that comes from sports. We're going to try and give you quality over quantity. That's why we've gone, come back to just the one show per week. Uh, try and make the opinions more precise, give you a little more information instead of missing things throughout the show that we really wanted to get to. Uh, a lot of stuff that we can get to today, of course. It's Championship Sunday. We're going to have the owner and operator of the Idaho Phoenix joining us on the, the Real Deal Sports Line. Um, but I want to talk real quick. You know, I said we, won't get, we wouldn't get political on this show very much. But today I do got to get a little political. It's something that needs to be talked about. It's something that needs to continue to be talked about. Um, we now have a new president. I won't speak his name. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with him as a person. I do hope that for the success of all of us, for the best of all of us, that he is successful. Um, but we have a new president. Flaws and all. I marched this weekend. I marched for my wife. I marched for my daughter. I marched for my friends and family. I marched for all of you out there, whether you agree with me or not. Because you also deserve the same rights that I believe my wife, my daughter, my friends, my family, my community deserve. Whether you voted for him, whether you didn't, whether you're from here or not, I believe that everybody who stood up and marched this weekend, that was the start. Now we got to continue it. Call your politicians, email them, flood them, inundate them with information. Let your voice be heard. The people in power's biggest fear is that one day we all rise up together or that we are all somehow unified. If we stay divided, they can You've continue to keep us down. Some news stories coming in there. More votes coming in on the poll before the show. Good. We're going to get to the poll results when we talk about Championship Sunday. Um, I marched in Denver. I was there with the 200,000 people almost that showed up for the protest and the march, the rally, the support movement, whatever you want to call it. And it was remarkable. At one point, there was about 2,000 of us singing happy birthday to this little eight-year-old girl who was there, her first march, had her sign, today I turn eight and I'm going to grow up to be fierce. Go ahead, little girl. You grow up to be fierce. Grow up and do what you got to do. Be who you want to be. Make your choices. Because remember, this is supposed to be the land of the free, right? That's where we are. And it was great to be out amongst so many like-minded people and not have to feel closed in and boxed off and angry. But to see that there's people who get it. Now, they don't necessarily agree with everything that I agree with. But it was a group of like-minded people. I joked with my buddy taking this to sports because he was there with me. Uh, Leif Thomas and his family and friends. Um, I said the only thing that can make this better for me was if this was a Lions Super Bowl parade. And we know that's not going to happen this year. But us Lions fans, we will hold out hope. We know it will happen soon. Um, just not this year. We're looking forward to next year. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep trying. Uh, that's what sports is about. The good moments and the bad moments. It's a perfect reflection almost of society when you take hate out of it. It's just good stuff. And we got two good games today, four great quarterbacks, a lot of bylines, a lot of stories going on around that. Um, just good stuff, all in all. So, um, I don't know if you guys heard this or not, but uh, Ryan Grigson, Colts GM, he has uh, been relieved of his duties, which I, you know, personally, I think that's about time. He has not been doing a good job there. Uh, You've and got mail. Andrew Luck kind of fell into their lap there. Oh, more vote, votes coming in on the poll. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, but Ryan Grigson, yeah, he made bad free agent picks. He's made bad draft picks. He signed guys to contracts that we didn't necessarily need to see. And um, he's now out there in Indianapolis. And... You know, everybody thought, oh, that means they're bringing in Peyton Manning. Um, no, I don't see Peyton Manning coming in to step into that role. 
at some point, yeah, I think he probably will if there's a team that he's going to have some kind of a connection to. Yeah, I do believe it'll be the Colts if he goes into some kind of GM role like that. But um, I don't think that's going to happen this year by any means. All right, let's see if we can get the owner-operator of the Idaho Phoenix on the phone here real quick, shall we? Or call him up, see what he's up to. Hey, this is uh, Kyle Purcell. I'm looking for uh, Dion. You too. Hey, Dion, how you doing, sir? All right. All right. So, for all of you listening out there, if you don't know, Dion Wainwood is the owner operator of the Idaho Phoenix, a semi pro football team based out of Idaho. Uh, he's also, coincidentally, he plays on the team. Uh, me and Dion, we, we go way back. Uh, Dion's a guy of mine. He played on uh, Little League football teams with me. And this guy, for, for, for all you out there, you know ne Neon Dion Sanders, right? This guy was Neon Dion before Dion Sanders was. Fastest guy I ever laid a cleats on the field with. Glad to have you on the show today, Dion. Um, let's get into it. Tell us a little bit about the Idaho Phoenix. Um, well, you caught me off guard. I thought we were next weekend. <laughs> oh, my bad. All right. But, um... Basically, um, I, for, I formulated this program to reach out to a lot of the younger men out here that um, maybe not have the opportunity, you know, during high school to maybe play as much as they thought they should, mm -hmm. or those that maybe did have the skills but just didn't go nowhere with it for whatever reason. Um, we're not a whole fall, so it's kind of a small community, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of politics dealing with their high school sports. So I have a lot of youngsters on the team coming out of high school um, with a professional talent, I mm -hmm. think, you know, just not given an opportunity. So this program was kind of built to give them another avenue to possibly even take it to, whether it's junior college to Division two or three, or even, you know, to a, a university, top university program, even as a walk-on or something like that. But it provides them a chance to get film um, that they might not have been able to achieve in high school because of playing time. Uh, it also is an outlet for a lot of these youngsters that maybe had a troublesome path, you know. Nice. To get back on their feet and do something that they love because most of them, you know, this is all they have. So the program to help them with that. Definitely. We all know the positivity that come out of sports and being able to provide that opportunity to, like you said, a lot of youngsters who might not have other opportunities. That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, yeah. uh, that's unbelievable that you're able to provide that, really. Um, so you said you got you got some guys coming out of high school. You got some uh -huh. older guys that are looking for uh, other opportunities, maybe to go on to college. Um, yes. Um, I saw something in the the information you sent me that you're starting maybe, is there a youth group that's starting with this as well? Yeah, we have a little league team, um, which is the Little Phoenix, and unfortunately, it's not like Colorado or Texas or California, any of these other states that start their youth programs that, you, you know, we play contact at four or five years old, right, you know? Right. I was, I was fortunate to start at four because my dad coached and snuck me in. So here, they don't start the kids playing contact football until they're in fourth grade. Wow. Okay. So that's Yeah, that's so they're perfect. forced to play flag football. Hmm. And, okay. Yeah. And I think that's a, a major setback to these kids out here. And I can see why developmentally they're so behind when they get to high school competing with any, any other state on national level of football I can see why they're so behind right they, they're not learning how to take that hit or give the hit correctly so yeah. exactly exactly well, that's very cool that I mean I'm I'm so impressed right now I just want to you know rep you and the Phoenix for the rest of your guys' scenes and because this is yeah. something that I think needs to grow. I think it's something that's really special, what you're doing for all these people, and now this Little League endeavor as well. 
um, if somebody else wants to get involved in this, if somebody else wants to join one of these teams that's out there, um, mm-hmm. how would they go about doing that? Like if it's your team in Idaho, if it's one of the other teams that you guys compete with, I know you guys were down in New Mexico, um, yeah. how would they go about getting in contact with you guys or just getting involved? Um, but we have we have a website which they can reach us at, which is uh, www.idahophoenixfootball.webs, dot com. Um, they can also reach us on Facebook and just type in Idaho Phoenix, um, or they get hit my personal page on Facebook Beyond Wainwood. Um, and those are probably the easiest because we have a numbers on there and everything else and a lot of information on there. So one way or another, they'll be able to get in contact with us. With the Little Phoenix, it's the same thing. A lot of kids have come through word of mouth to us from other parents to parents, you know. Mm-hmm. And certainly, because um, a lot of kids, I get with this kind of, you know, the troubled youth. So a lot of probation officers and um Counselors have reached out to our program to put these kids in, Very cool. you know, to help keep them out of trouble. So that is awesome. That's that's stuff I love to hear. That's building community. That's sports yeah. taking all the positivity that it has, all the stuff it can bring to people, and it's just yeah. wrapping it all up. That's that's awesome to hear. Um, how's the how's the current season going? I know you guys have played at least one game already. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how that went? Well. Uh, we had played them last year, um, so it was kind of like a rivalry uh, situation. So we went back out there this this year. We just got back from last weekend. Um, we travel out there usually around the same time period due to it benefits us because we're able to get a game in early, mm-hmm. but also traveling to the normal weather compared to us dealing with negative weather here in Idaho. Right. So um, it was better last year. I'll just put it that way I'm not gonna bash nobody but it was kinda um unorganized this time around but we still went out and handled our business and made the best situation out of it and got some of our younger players new players uh some work so it it worked out good 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 to hear so uh where can people see the Phoenix play next um we will have our home game February 25th which is actually um a charity game but one of our players, his nephew, is four years old, and he just got diagnosed while he was down there in New Mexico. He got a call that his nephew um, just got diagnosed with leukemia. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we'll be doing a donation charity game to try to raise some money for the family to support them and stuff. So, yeah, definitely anybody out there who's listening, if you have time, if you're in Idaho Springs or, excuse me, Idaho Falls, yeah, Idaho right. Falls, February 25th. If you check out the Facebook page, I'm sure there'll be a link. Let's get this kid some help. Let's reach out, be part of the community. Um, let's be part of this movement that's happening there with the Idaho Phoenix, okay? Let's help out the best we can. Definitely. So, uh, appreciate that. Definitely. You know, it's all love. Let's let's come together as one, right? Yeah, so we have to. What's, what's the future hold for the Phoenix? What do you see... The, the Phoenix growing into? Um, well, right now we have, um, we have two offers. Cause we're an independent team. Right. Um, which means we're not in a league, which allows us to kind of play everywhere, anywhere, anytime type situation. So we have two offers um, into some two leagues. So we're weighing the options, weighing the pros and cons. Um, most likely we'll probably next year be in the ICFL which is the Idaho Contact Football League, which is mainly based in the Boise area, okay. um, which I think they consist right now of 11 teams, and Adam will be 12. Um, we're heavily way towards that direction. Nice. Well, congratulations. That's big stuff. 